How's it going guys? So if you have uh, no intentions of ever building a cabin in Newfoundland or if you're not interested in uh, seeing the process or hearing the process of uh, how you acquire land in Newfoundland this video is probably not for you. It's going to be pretty much all talking. I'm going to explain uh, the best of my knowledge and what I've researched uh, in recent days and stuff how things have changed since I applied five years ago. Uh, yeah, if you're not interested in that stuff, this is probably not the video for you. It's not going to be a typical log cabin video or anything. It's just going to be pretty much talking. So I totally understand if you want to uh, click out of this video right now. But uh, for you, those of you who are, who are interested in uh, learning how to acquire land here, then uh, by all means, stay tuned. So there's two types of cabins you can apply for when you're applying for land. There's the remote recreational cottage which is what I have because it's remote and there's a recreational cottage which means the recreational cottage is something you can drive to in a vehicle in a car or a truck you know it's off a dirt road you just uh, pull in your driveway to your your cottage that's a recreational cottage uh, that co that type of cottage if you're looking uh, to apply for land is uh, is a little different and it's going to be much more expensive to uh, get up and running because you have to have a survey you're going to have to survey your land so you're going to have to pay a surveyor to come you're going to have to have some sort of uh, on-site water supply so you're going to have to drill an artesian well or something and you have to have an on-site sewage disposal so you're going to have to have a septic tank or something so all that comes in in, uh, in effect when you apply for a, a recreational cottage. A recreational cottage again is one you can drive to in a normal vehicle, a car, a truck, you drive right in the driveway to your cab, cabin. Uh, also if you get approved for a piece of land for a recreational cottage you have to purchase it from the government. It's not a license to occupy like my cabin where I just pay an annual fee to uh, have my cabin on this land. A recreational cottage you have to purchase the land and that could be you know, it could be a few thousand dollars, could be, you know, fifty or sixty thousand dollars, depending on what the government thinks that land is worth. So it's a little sketchy when you think about it that way because you really don't know how much you're going to be paying for it when you apply. So the remote cottage, remote recreational cottage, is what I have. That means uh, you can't get to it by uh, your everyday vehicle. You know what I mean? You have to use a, you have to hike, you have to use a boat, you have to use a quad snowmobile something like that in order to get to your cabin that's why it's uh, defined as a remote recreational cottage uh, for here I don't need a, a water supply I don't need a septic system unless I was I was within one kilometer of a road now the closest road to me is route 230 that runs down through the Bonavista Peninsula that's three kilometers away so I, I was good to go here uh, I don't need any any sewer or anything I'm just gonna have an outhouse right uh, so the application process, you find out where you want to build, you know, you pick out somewhere you want to build, and it's your responsibility to find out if anybody else owns that land, or maybe their ancestors may have owned that land, you know, had a little potato gardens or something there. If you fill out your application for that land, you send it off with your 150 bucks plus tax, uh, and the lands department comes back and says, uh, so-and-so owned that land. 30 years ago, so we can't approve you. Your 150 bucks is gone, you don't get it back, it's not refundable. So it's up to you to do the research, make sure nobody owns the land. Obviously, I went up way in here, up on this hill, I knew nobody owned this land before. So, also, when you find your piece of land, you have to make sure it's 30 meters away from any water, any uh, body of water, any uh, brooks, rivers, ponds, ocean, whatever. Uh, it has to be at least 30 meters away and if you are applying in a place where it's uh, there may be other cabins in the area remote cabins you have to be at least 45 meters away from their cabin so really somebody could come and apply for a piece of land 45 meters away from me if they want it but I hope that doesn't happen <laughs> so when I applied five years ago I also had to have a municipality form, so I had to print off a form from the Lands Department website and uh, bring it to my local municipality. You have to bring it to uh, whatever municipality is closest to your cabin site. 
and then they approve it. Once they approve it, then you can send off your application to the lands department, which is uh, provincial. Now it's different. I was talking to a lady from the lands department yesterday because I was doing a little research. I wanted to make sure I had everything right before I made this video. And now you don't have to go to the municipality, so it takes away a step from you. When you send in your application, they contact the municipality to make sure it's fine. So you don't have to do that. That takes a step away from you, which is a little easier, right? So you find your land. Everything's good. You're, you're confident nobody owned the land before. You know, you're 30 meters away from water, all that stuff. So what you do is you, uh, you print off a map or something. You get, your, you get your form, your application. You print it off the land's website, uh, the land's department of Newfoundland. And you uh, fill it out, fill out all your information, and you can also, what I did was print off a, uh, just a screenshot of, uh, of uh, Google Earth. And I, pr I printed that off, and I pinpointed exactly where I wanted to build. I put that in with the application. You can also uh, just put in the GPS coordinates, and they'll uh, see exactly where you, where you want to build. So you send off your application. You might have to wait a long time before you hear back. Sometimes they take a long time. Uh, it took me 14 months from the day I sent my application to when I was finally approved. I had the paper saying, yes, you, you can now build a cabin on this land. 14 months. Now, there was a few little issues there that kind of delayed it. I was back and forth with them. They were back and forth with their head office and stuff. There was a couple of questions in that there that, that needed to be answered. So it took a little while longer. But if you were to apply somewhere where, uh, say there's a, a pond and there's two or three cabins built around this pond. If you were to apply for a piece of land near that pond, most likely it would go quick because all those other cabins have already been approved. So they'll just look at that. They'll say, okay, we recognize this pond. Yes, check mark, whatever, and send it back and you'll probably be approved quickly. Um, but if you're, in, if you're somewhere where they have to come out, the, the closest lands department to me is an hour and a half away. So if they have to come out, hike or quad or whatever to this area that you're applying, check it out, make sure it's okay, then it's probably going to take longer, right? The, the application process. So after you get approved, hopefully you get approved, you know you'll be waiting by the, by the mailbox hoping to get approved. Uh, once you get approved, there's a $300 processing fee that you have to pay. Plus, you have to pay your first year's rental, which is $200. So, right now you're in, what, $650 or more? Because it's $150 bucks you send, non refundable, $150 plus tax, non refundable with your application. So once you send off your application, that 150 bucks is gone. You never see it again. You never get it back, uh, <clears throat> even if you're not approved. And uh, so once you are approved, then you send your $300 processing fee, application processing fee, or whatever it is, and you have to pay your first year rental, which is 200. When I was approved uh, four years ago, it was 115 to send with my application. It was a 200 processing fee, and it was a hundred dollars yearly annual fee. So it was much cheaper. Now it's gone up. You're looking at 650 plus. So still, that's not bad if you think about it. You're getting, you know, you get a piece of land. Your first year is paid for, and you have to pay 200 dollars every year after uh, on the date you were approved. So every year after that, you pay your 200 bucks and you pretty much own the land, even though you don't technically own the land, it's government land. So uh, if you get approved, it's, it's called a license to occupy. Now I have the definition of license to occupy here it is a form where permission to use the land for a specified purpose and under certain conditions is given to a licensee, but where ownership of the land remains with the crown. So what that means is the government still owns the land, however, you know, you could build your cabin, you could do whatever, put in your outhouse, your fire pit, all that stuff, and just pay your annual fee. Now, if you, if you skip paying your annual fee, the government will take your land back, make you tear your cabin down. If uh, the government, if the lands department comes by and checks it out, 
and you're burning rubber tires all around the cabin, there's trash everywhere, beer bottles everywhere, you know, uh, plastic bags uh, uh, in the trees and this and that, uh, most likely the lands department is going to have an issue with that, and uh, rightfully so, I believe. So just keep your land uh, nice and clean, you know, respect uh, the surroundings, respect the wildlife and everything, and uh, you should have no issues. So a few more uh, things, um, you have to have your cabin built within five years of, of being approved, which I was caught in there a little close, it took me four years but to, to have it finished, but uh, it should be no problem to build a cabin within five years of being approved. Most likely if you're approved, you're going to get right at it, and uh, hopefully you don't have issues like I did, and you can just have your cabin built in a couple months or whatever. Uh, if you want a... If you're, uh, if there's a pond or 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 something close by, and you want a uh, little boathouse or a uh, dock or something like that, that's a whole new application process. So you would have to go and and apply differently for that, and most likely it will cost more money to apply for that stuff. Also, a remote cottage can be converted to a recreational cottage. Let's say if I built a road for my car to get to this cabin, then the lands department can then change that over to a recreational cottage. I have to go get surveyed. I have to buy the land straight up, what they think it's worth. Uh, and I have to get a uh, septic tank, everything like that put in. And uh, yeah, it's just a whole lot more messing around, I think. It's much more convenient for people to j drive to their cabin. But I'm perfectly fine with uh, taking a quad or just walking up the hill to my cabin. So right now I'm paying 100 bucks a year for this piece of land. You know, I, I take care of it. I, uh, you know, I'm not like clear cutting the area or anything like that. I'm not I'm throwing trash out my windows and stuff like that. So uh, I'm sure it'll be fine for years to come. Uh, I'm sure the government will never bother me as long as they're getting that payment once a year. Now, like I said, the payment has gone up right now to 200 a year. So if you apply now in Newfoundland you're going to have to pay $200 a year. Still, it's not bad for a piece of land, you know what I mean? Also, there is no... Uh, when I applied, I, I thought they said I was responsible for one acre of land around the cabin, but uh, I, I think they must have changed that, and there's no specific land amount. Uh, but nobody can come and like, cut wood, cut firewood, or, or build a cabin within 45 meters of your cabin. So I would say 45 meters each way, you take care of that and you're uh, good to go. Remote cottage, that's what, I, that's what I'm familiar with guys. Uh, if you're looking for a recreational uh, cottage, one you can actually drive to with your car or truck, uh, it's going to be a little different. All the information is on the Newfoundland Labrador Lands website, Lands Department. But uh, you're looking at having to buy a piece of land then. Um, if you're a non-resident, you cannot apply for a remote cottage because uh, you have to be a resident in order to, license, to uh, rent and uh, receive the license to occupy. Uh, if you are a non-resident and you want a recreational cottage, you are absolutely allowed, but you have to uh, just purchase the land straight up. Purchase it from somebody who owns it already, or purchase a cabin that's already on the land. So just a quick recap. You find your piece of land you want to build on, you do the research, make sure nobody else owns it, you send, you send your application with your, uh, your place on a map where you want to build or your GPS coordinates. You send your application to the lands department with your $150 plus tax uh, money order or whatever. Then you wait. So if you get approved, you send off your $300 plus your $200 uh, rental, annual rental, your first year rental, and your $300 processing fee. And then you'll get your you know, you'll get your uh, numbers, your uh, serial numbers for your lot, we'll say. Then you have five years to build your cabin. And uh, you'll just pay your annual fee every uh, year after, after the date you've been approved. So that's it, guys. Uh, I hope I explained it. I hope you understand it. If, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments. And I'll definitely answer them, and if I don't know them, I'll, I'll research it for you. I'll, I'll send some emails or whatever I have to do, and I'll try to find out the answer for you. That's pretty much the least I can do for you guys uh, to thank you guys for watching the video, right? So I'll, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. 
Also, uh, if you're not from Newfoundland, uh, leave leave a comment. Let me know if it's if it's uh, easier in Newfoundland to get a cabin, or if it's harder than where you're from. Let me know, you know, a little bit about your process, what you need to do. Like, do you have to just go out and pay a hundred thousand dollars for a piece of land, or can you have a piece of land for six hundred bucks, like like I have here? You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Lots more videos coming. Uh, I'm heading out to do uh, some trouting, some fishing this week. So hopefully I have a nice little cook up for you guys and hopefully catch some trout. Uh, and yeah, take care guys.